But just like that, we forgot about the child refugees, right? The petition happened, it came and went, and we all forgot about it, right? Like, and, it, and that, was, that was startling to me because, like, it, a couple of decades ago, we never had that attitude in this country, right? And, like, I was welcomed here with my family, right? And, you know, it, it was a different attitude, right? But it's because of the constant language used to talk about refugees that I hated that word when I was younger. I hated telling people I was a refugee. I remember once my mum told me she was a refugee, right? And we were in the living room and she tried to hug me. I was like, ooh, get away from me, you dirty refugee. Like, it's... No, I loved her, innit? But, like, she was a refugee, innit? Like, it's... And my brothers were, were born here, so they always have fun with that shit. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, because cause they were born here, they're like, I'm not a refugee. Like, and they, were, they come up with their own ideas, like, yo, Kate, you know how we know you're a refugee, yeah? You've had your appendix out and you've broken your leg. You're only here for the NHS, bro, right? <laughs> or like, they'll be looking at me going, why do you get more pocket money than us? You're here to steal our jobs, bro, I swear. <laughs> Now, my favorite one was when they look at me and go, how do we even know you're the age you say you are? That beard looks suspicious. <laughs> do you know what, though? Like, the, it's, time and time again, like, anti-immigrant rhetoric and language is used to, me, to demean refugees, and then we get surprised when a populist right-wing movement takes over, like Trump in America, or we get Brexit or whatever, right? And, like, it's, it's always weird to me, because people are like, oh, my God, this is unprecedented. We've never seen this before. And I was like, really? Unprecedented? We've never seen a straight white man use racism to garner support. Like, that's never happened before. Like, it's not like we're exactly low on examples, guys. Hitler, Mussolini, insert Eastern European leader here, right? <laughs> Do you know, I was thinking about this, though, as well, though, right? Because, like, people always give the right wing a bit of bad press, right? But, like, no, nah, like, but if I'm being honest with myself, because I am quite left wing, right? But I don't want to see a truly left wing society. Like, I don't want to see a left-wing WrestleMania or boxing match, right? It's, what happens? Everyone gets a belt. Fuck off. Like, can you imagine what they do to the Olympics? It'd just be like jury service. Do you know what I mean? Like, everybody gets a call-up. You'll be at work and Terry walking. Yeah, you're just going to go to the Olympics in August. Oh, no way. I did javelin four years ago. You're going to love it. I don't want to see a left-wing Super Bowl. Yeah, like, there'll be no Bruno Mars at a halftime show. It'll just be a different primary school playing green sleeves on the recorder. Yeah? <laughs> just over and over and over and over. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is, right, I'd rather Boris Johnson organise my stag do over Jeremy Corbyn, right? That's just basically what I'm saying, right? <laughs> it's true, though, right? No. It's cool. But you know what? We see the headlines everywhere. You know, we see the headlines. You know, people will say things. Ah, oh, we're only a small island. We can't let them in. There's too many people here already. <laughs> too many of them. <laughs> what I don't understand is, right, we call ourselves Great Britain and then get surprised when people turn up to see how great it really is. <laughs> like, there's an adjective in the name, bruv, right? There's no other country on earth has that. We don't have banging Bangladesh. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just... Because I would go. I would go, you know, have you been to Bangladesh? It's banging, banging, banging. <laughs> but do you know what, though? If they are right, yeah, and there are way too many people in this country, let's have a one-in, one-out policy. Right? <laughs> no, I don't mean, like, one refugee or one immigrant in and one out. No, that's a UKIP manifesto pledge. Like, I don't, I don't want to be seen anywhere near that, right? But I'm saying, like, all of us that grew up in the West, right, we won the lottery, okay? Like, like and we, we've, we've got a level of privilege. And if you haven't utilised that, you're out. <laughs> like, if you inherit a fortune, but the only way you're able to make money is to go on a show like Made in Chelsea, you're out. <laughs> and if you say things like, I think the Daily Mail makes some great points, you're out, you're out, you're fucking... You're out. Right. Do you know what? I think we should get the refugees and the immigrants to compete against these other people that we don't want in this country for a spot in this country. Do you know what I mean? Like, only one will survive. We could televise the whole thing. You, can, you know, we could have a show of physical challenges. You know, we could put it on primetime Saturday night TV, get Anton Deck to host it, you know, give it like a catchy name, like, I don't know, Total Whiteout. Do you know what I mean? It's just like... You know, it'd be great. You can see Ade at the starting line, you know, the tall West African fella with muscles bulging versus, you know, Louis, some skinny you keeper from Dagenham. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, they have to do a hundred meter dash to a back of a lorry, you know. 
obviously Ade would win for stereotypical reasons, innit? Like, see Louis being carted off by security halfway on the finish line, like, oh, semi bacon, semi bacon! We could have like a university challenge style show where they've got like a refugee team versus the, the, the four guys from Kent. Do you know what I mean? It'll be great. You know, you could get like these guys on this side. Paxman will be hosting the whole thing like, so uh, what refugee team, what is, uh, what's your motto? Uh, education, humility, love. Okay, guys from Kent, what's your motto? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Lads, lads, lads. <laughs> You know, we could have a reality TV show afterwards, like, you know, Ade has been substituted into Louis' house now, you yeah. <laughs> know. Suddenly the kid's grades have gone up because he's, you know, enforcing strict immigrant-style discipline. And the kid comes home with a B, he's like, should have been a star starter, you know, that kind of shit, right? Like, I personally think it's a great plan, right? Because we'd be getting, we'd be, get, we'd be solving two problems, you know, the overpopulation crisis and we'd be letting the refugees in, right? The only thing holding us back is a bit of racial hatred. Right? <laughs> Which brings me to my next point, right? I think a bit of racial hatred keeps you alive. Okay, right, let's put it this way, guys, right? You know, like, over the past few years, a lot of our legends have been dying, right? You know, a lot of people have been dying. But it's never the ones you want to die, innit? Listen, I wouldn't wish death upon anybody, but if certain people were to die... Like, think about it. All right, guys, you got... I know, I know I've lost some of you right now, yeah, but trust me, you're gonna come on board, right? Some of you are looking hella silent, like, yo, he was funny, but, like, what's this? <laughs> I'm being serious, right, yeah? Just, just think about the... Here's the facts, right, as they are, right? Nigel Farage, he was involved in a plane crash. He had blood gushing down the side of his head, but he was right back at it the next day. He took a paracetamol and he started spouting hate, you know what I mean? Katie Hopkins had life-threatening brain surgery but was right back here the next day writing articles calling refugees cockroaches. Yeah? You know, Martin Luther King, I have a dream, one gunshot dead. Um, oh, some of you still aren't convinced. All right, no, I've got more examples, guys. I've got more examples, there's more. Okay, Rockefeller, he founded the modern day eugenics movement, right? He lived till 97 in the 20s. Who the fuck lives till 97 now, guys? There's more examples, guys. Come on, I'm going to keep going, right? Some of you might be bringing up Mandela. Nice, nice of you to bring up Mandela, guys, right? Okay. But when Mandela was screaming things like, ring the white man's neck with car tires, he was able to withstand 27 years in prison. As soon as he started preaching, brotherhood and unity. <laughs> the countdown was on. He started talking funny. He started walking funny. There's a reason that Autobot biography was called The Long Walk to Freedom. Do you know what I mean, right? Oh, come on, guys. The most racist man on earth, Hitler. Even he had to kill himself because no one else could, man. Come on. Some of you still aren't convinced. All right, all right, guys. I'll give you the best example, right? The nicest man ever, right? The nicest man ever in history, right? Jesus Christ died twice before he was 40. The facts are there, guys, all right? A bit of racial hatred keeps you alive. What I don't want to happen, though, is that to lead to alternative forms of medicine. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, a gentleman's having a heart attack, you know, like, and the paramedics turn up to the scene. They've got two options. They could either use a defibrillator or they could just whisper sweet racist nothings into his ear, you know? So, You're right, Emma. Suddenly he starts waking up like, build a wall, build a wall, build a wall. <laughs> All I'm saying is, man, like, you, you might be missing out on a few future comedians like me, innit, right? Because you know? my parents came over to this country, right, in 1990, right? They were fleeing war and persecution and they came here for a safer life um, and they moved to Brixton, South London. <laughs> It was in 1990, guys, two years after the first set of riots and five years before the second set of riots, you know? Because, you know, who needs an easy life? Sometimes you need to hear gunshots to remind you why you left home, okay? 